We have to take you. Is that oh. your back? That was terrible. Oh. Ooh, I didn't think I was going to get that, did you? I know. <laughs> I got in um, a really minor, like, little accident and hurt my neck. And so I started seeing chiropractics way back then. Um, you were a teenager? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, my cousin's actually a chiropractor part-time. He's also a nurse practitioner now. Um, so he's he's adjusted me before, too. Okay. And does really, really good. And he kind of helped direct me to as who to see. And actually said on one of your videos, he's like, yes, yeah, see this guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. You have headaches? How often do you have headaches? Um, less frequently, I used to have migraines related to birth control, um, so that's a lot less frequent. Okay. But I do get headaches. I tend to get tight on like the left side of my neck, scalenes, like sternocleidomastoid, all that stuff. Okay. Um, so it kind of gets like up in the occipital region here. I feel just like tight. Um, yeah. And then numbness you have in the hands? So if I'm like on my phone a lot and I am in this position, I get like tingling in my hands. So it's really positional. It's like when I'm working day to day, normal stuff. So I arms, don't, arms I don't up. get, when my arms are bent, I okay. get that tingly sensation. How long has that been going on? Just um, years? Years. Long? Years. Okay. Years. Yeah. Very, very sporadic. Jaw pain, both both sides? I have pretty gnarly TMJ. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know you clench at night? Do you think you... I do. Sometimes I wake up with my jaw kind of tight occasionally, but not too frequently. Okay. The head the head to shoulder alignment does affect the jaw, so we'll check that out in a little bit. Sometimes, you know, if it's subconscious or you're clenching at nighttime, it's, it's a tough one to fix. But if it mm -hmm. it's has to do with your neck, headaches a lot to do with the upper cervical. Yes, you know, hormones and mm -hmm. there's a lot, a lot of factors that influence headaches, but... There's the spinal components that we can try to address today, and right. a lot of pain is a summation. Everything additive together finally mm -hmm. reaches a threshold, and that's what we, so how much we can, you know, fix and how much we, we won't be able to, we'll sort of figure out. Some pain in the right hip postpartum after? Actually, it was during my pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I think it had to do with the laxity due to all the hormones and things. Mm -hmm. um, I had come home after a long day at work and put my feet up and I was kind of slightly reclined on the couch and as soon as I got up that right SI joint was like screaming in pain and for the whole weekend um, for the, that yeah and then it's never quite gone away okay. I've never been able to get that to completely subside so it just kind of has this like tension ache sometimes okay. And I feel like that's been transferred down into my heel. You feel it um, kind of radiate a little bit? Yeah. Not the, not the pain necessarily, but I think because that's causing dysfunction, everything's connected yeah. with that more than I do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's created some heel problems for me. Go take your shoes off for me. Tell, show me that, where you're feeling. I've always been like hyper flexible with my ankles, mm -hmm. but this one's like feels stuck now when I, when I point my toe. Um, I know that I've kind of... Mm, changed my gait a little bit because of the pain. So the pain varies between Achilles pain and then sometimes I'm really point tender, like literally right here, it will swell and hurt. And then sometimes it's a little bit more here, but it's never all the way through my fascia. Okay. I've tried massage for plantar fasciitis because that's what I've been told mm -hmm. in the background in athletic training. So I'm you mm -hmm. know familiar, very familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And it that never helped. Okay. So the plantar fascia is supported by this muscle called the tibialis anterior. The tendon of this muscle is what supports the arch. Mm -hmm. Where your the the fascia underneath the foot goes from the base of the toes here to the heel. And mm -hmm. so when the arch drops, it pulls, it lengthens that fascia. And okay. so just you know, just compressing that fascia is not going to fix the arch, not going to fix any contraction. Right. And, and the contraction usually in the upper you know, tibialis anterior muscle happens mainly because of, well, and I have hip pain, and then typically when we have back pain, we typically go forward. Mm -hmm. When our weights go forward, we get more weight on our toes, that drops the arch, that causes the fascia. And so it's not, it's not coincidental that, and I felt it here first, and, and now, now I feel it in my yeah. foot because the foot's a just a slave to the lower back. No MRIs or x-rays have been taken of your spine. Okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily change my treatment, but uh, you know, it's it's likely just from what I'm hearing, there could be some disc injury in your lower back. It doesn't change my care necessarily, but um, I'm gonna treat you from the perspective of this area is under duress and we're gonna move some stress okay. away from it. It's really point tender, like on my SI joint. Go stand up for me, my, show me, show me where it's. Like, Right here. This is exactly where it hurts. Okay. Right there. 
And so it's not here. It's exactly. Right there on that attachment. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that is what's always been painful for okay. me. That is an attachment point. A lot of muscles kind of dive into the bone mm -hmm. and they make roots there. And if it's just an attachment, it'd be curious why it's been four years. I mean, yes, it could be somebody needs to go in there and mash it back down. Mm -hmm. The nerves from your lower back control the healing in that area. So it's always the nerves. <laughs> because if the nerves are not happy, then an injury in there from birth or you know babies and taking care of children won't resolve if the nerve is not happy. So it's confusing sometimes because you'll get weakness, atrophy, long before you get neuritis and sciatica. It's like, well, no, I, I don't have shooting pain. I'm like, yeah, but you'll have five, 10 years before all of a sudden everybody agrees with me and goes, yeah, it's sciatica. You have weakness or injuries that aren't healing. Again, it's it just, it's a little, it could be. Okay. I, I don't know. Like I said, we have to get a picture to confirm it. But let me look at the rest of here. Left hip is pretty high here. We got about a quarter inch higher on your left hip. So your body's in avoidance. Mm -hmm. So when you lift your left hip up on the on the model, so let me show you this. And I'm feeling you, your left hip is high, and mm -hmm. what that does is when you lift your left hip up, the holes on the right get larger. So. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're tilting yeah. to the left. Lifting your left hip up essentially tilts your spine. To, I'm exaggerating, but you're opening this right side up. So, I feel crooked. I feel, I, all of me feels crooked. We're dealing with about, about an inch and a half head forward. We want to, when the head goes forward, what you've noticed is that this starts to yeah. raise up. And so mm -hmm. it's called coupled motion. When the head goes forward, this has to elevate. And so it's twofold. We can't just bring the head back. We also have to press the chest in. And so mm -hmm. you'll see me working on your upper back in a second and then giving you some stretches at the end. That has a lot to do with the tension in your neck and the tightness and then even the ears and the drainage. All of that is affected by the ears got to be over your shoulder. The more forward your head goes, just perpetual tension in your neck. Cross this arm under. Mm -hmm. All right. Do a little sit up for me. Take a deep breath in. Head back for me. Let all the air out. There we go. Deep breath in. Head back. Deep breath in. Exhale. Chin down a little bit. Good. All right. There you go. <laughs> and just take a deep breath in. We're going to go gentle here. Exhale. I got you. It's okay. Uh -huh. All right. Deep breath in. Exhale. Oh, that's really good. Take a deep breath in. Here we are, already moving, yeah. <laughs> exhale. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, exhale. Uh -huh. Let's go face up for me. Wow, so your left hip is moving all over the place. <laughs> Did you see the difference there? I heard the difference. But the left was like, sure. The right hip was like, hmm. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, if they, sometimes if one hip, if they both are, let's say stiff, at least they're symmetrically stiff, right? Yeah. It's when we have asymmetry that brings up the biggest kind of yellow flag in my mind. You know, why is one hip, like that left hip was already moving before I even really put pressure on it. It was like mm -hmm. hypermobile. We got a pretty large bump here on the right. You probably noticed this thing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's the elephant in the room here. This giant knot on the right side of her neck. You know, so this, this bump right here, it's a favoritism to tilt your head left. So when I tilt you to the right, right there, they're level. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I had to tilt your head 15 degrees to the right to get the bones in your neck level. But when your head is now level with your torso, the bones are sticking out on the right. It's a, when you tilt your head left, the bones shift to the right side. So essentially you're doing this and that's what's, you know, causing all these shifts throughout your spine. I would argue that it starts in BJ Palmer, the first chiropractor taught that everything kind of begins with the atlas, the first bone in the upper neck can go out of alignment and that creates a domino effect down to your feet. I'll work on your feet and I want to check it out in a minute, but my, my point is that the if the upper neck gets tight, the lower neck gets overworked, that makes your head go forward, that makes you round, that makes your lower back, that makes your mm -hmm. shins get tight, plantar fasciitis, and so it dominoes its way down. We're gonna start with the right side here, baby. We're just gonna try, we're not trying to move every bone, we're trying to move just the top guy, I'm not trying to pop every segment. I know it makes cool YouTube videos, but I'm really just trying to just adjust this top guy a little bit. Here we go. I got you. Real gentle. Here we go. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. You 
okay? Mm-hmm. Fine. The last folks I was seeing were a bit brutal. Oh, my. So it was like square peg, round hole. That's what it felt just like. Just jam it in there. That's right. Yeah. I got you. Just, and I was, just, it, it, it was not. Make it fit. I got you. It wasn't good for me. I got your chin up. There we go. So you've noticed this knot here before, you've kind of yeah. felt this, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. After 26, our body kind of gets pretty stiff, <laughs> or there. easier for it to get <laughs> stiff. And so, it be, you know, mm -hmm. we have to spend more time coercing and encouraging your spine to become soft again and just... 26 seems like a lifetime. Oh my, I'm 38, so I can't, ah. I can't get in here yet. These are the roots. This is the same muscle. The same muscle that attaches up here is here. It's not a different muscle. It's just the other end of the same muscle. These are the roots. I look very unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the main, I hope the main takeaway we're going to, by the end of this visit, is that we, I'm going to try to give you a toothbrush and teach you how to brush your own teeth. You know, kind of idea. That's, we haven't, your life is inundated with looking down. We have to start incorporating some level of counter stretching, some balancing stretching. Otherwise, our, your relationship with a chiropractor is going to be tenuous because it's just, <laughs> and I felt good for a couple of days and now it's back again and, right. and I'm not, I don't see the point and I would agree with that because you can't change posture through adjustments or massage or gua sha or any of that. The goal is to try to go as deep as I can on your spine in terms of loosening it without you getting too mad at me and hitting me <laughs> and figuring out what pace, does that make sense, that you can handle like going to the gym and doing a big workout, you know, if I give you too much of a workout, you can't move the next day, <laughs> yeah. I've over, overburdened you, you know, or if I go too easy, then we haven't even, you know, then we're wasting your time. And so there's a Nick Willinda balancing game I got to figure out of how much I can push you. That's why I was asking how much you've been worked on and okay, what you've been through. And it kind of gives me an idea of, you know, do we have to start off as a white belt or do we start off as a brown belt or <laughs> where are we starting off here? Women are always tougher though. My, my, my top 10 most tough patients are all women. <laughs> See, the left side doesn't, got a little injury right there, but it's, it's much more um, compliant. It's not arguing with me as much as the right side. There you go, this is home. Nobody showed you this before? Mm -mm. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we have to hold you close to this. That's going to be our goal, is to aim your spine and show you how to mold and stretch into this position. And the longer you stay here, the more your body will want to be here. And that's it. That's where the tension and the jaw pain and everything stems from. There's a thing called a lordosis, an arch, a 45-degree curve that your neck is supposed to have that you had when you were one and we lost it with Naya care and you know we didn't, nobody told us we were supposed to value it and so we lost it and now we it's like we're trying to bring it back what you used to have so I, you know some people might you know look at my care and think well you know well it looks similar it's like well because I really don't treat symptoms we treat alignment, we treat the curves, and then symptoms go away. That the posture creates tension, inflammation, disc injury, you know, nerve pressure. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, when the curve in your neck goes straight, the wires as they exit the side of your spinal column are held tight like an uncooked spaghetti noodle. They're like tethered. And when there's a curve in your neck, those wires are loose and have the ability to move away from, even if there are disc injuries, they have the ability to move. Kind of like was it Muhammad Ali, like rope dope. You know, they have the ability to go with the flow and move with the punches. You know, they the curve in the spine makes even disc injuries or bone spurs irrelevant. So getting the arch back to your spine is everything. And and I look down all day long. Okay. <laughs> There's your problem. Right there. Oh boy, wow. Your, <laughs> your spine's like glued together. <laughs> that was interesting. Did you feel that? Yeah. I'm gonna be like an inch taller, huh? <laughs> there we go. Now it's getting small. It's getting softer now. There we go. 
the same bone moving another level so it's like a sliding drawer it moved in you know halfway and then moved in another 20 percent you know trying to get it to full closure see if the joint doesn't overlap we can't stretch the rubber bands on the front part of your neck so if you move the air box out of the way you have your esophagus underneath the esophagus is this ligament called the anterior longitudinal ligament and that ligament being tight is what pulls us forward so as much as you might try to rub or compress the back, if this ligament doesn't get stretched, then it won't hold. So we're trying to get the joints to compress deep enough so that we can actually get... And one way you can tell that we're actually at that level is I can't swallow. Because <laughs> if we're stretching the esophagus, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Then we're stretching the ligament that's underneath it. And so as we, you know, sometimes new patients, even when I put their head back, yeah, I can swallow easily. <laughs> it's because we're not there yet. We haven't gotten deep enough to actually get into that ligament. Just chin down, just gently. You don't have, not, not hard, just, just gently. There we go. Yeah, right there. I look forward to my adjustment at the end of the day. It's like, yes, just get it all out of me. <laughs> like right there, yeah, it's... You almost see Carl a little darker there. See that it's almost a little bit uh, darker colored mark versus this is like lighter Red, this is like a darker, mm -hmm. that's all the inflammation. This is more lactic acid right there. This is why she has some more headaches on the right. This kind of inflammation that's been trapped in here. Right there. So when they see it, nope, you don't have shingles, okay? It's not, <laughs> it's just gua sha. <laughs> your terminal, your boss will be like, what the heck? <laughs> Go home! <laughs> you want to try, just look for it. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Last time you've been to a dental hygienist, the last time somebody's clean your teeth. <laughs> the longer it's been, the more gingivitis or the more, you know, my gums bleed and it's like, yeah, I haven't been flossing the way I should. I never, I always know my dental hygienist knows how well I floss them. Right. I can't hide anything from them. So this is like spinal flossing. We gotta clean. There shouldn't be any tenderness anywhere. There's not any normal soreness in your back. Check out that attachment in the bottom of this neck. I just want to, want to check this the spinal column first. Again, if I'm going too hard, please let me know, okay? Okay. I'll keep, I'll keep going a little deeper and deeper. You've been in Florida, Sarasota? Um, my husband and I moved to Sarasota over nine years ago. Okay, all right. Points up here haven't been compressed in a while. <laughs> right here. Just life expands them. And...
Did the second pregnancy change this hip pain a lot? How, or how did no. it affect it? It was mm -hmm. the same after the first. Mm -hmm. And the second one didn't alter it. Yeah, and it's it, mm -hmm. it's not it's not terribly painful most of the time, uh -huh. but there's this tightness to it. And again, okay. kind of like you were talking about how I was so crooked, but everything just feels crooked. Mm -hmm. Both were natural births, C-sections, or? Uh, both were, not, not, well, not natural as far as no meds, but vaginal births. Just epidural, births. but, yeah. no, but no, no, no. No epidural with the first, but epidural with the second. Okay, all right. No, it was sometime during the end of my second trimester You're still pregnant. Okay. was when the hip started to to hurt. My low back wasn't supported, right. but my backside, my like hips and sacrum was supported. See, so it was kind of a slouched position. But you just said that position is putting a lot of stress on this disc. Mm -hmm. You understand? Know That's why I'm going back to the disc. Yeah. Because it, now when you're pregnant, the ligaments are, the progesterone is loosening up all the ligaments. Everything, all the joints are destabilized, you know, as your body's transforming. So it makes that injury happen easily. There must have been something there already. Gotcha. But then the loosening effect of being pregnant then took down some of the, what's to say, the glue that was holding it all together. And, you know, I, I, I would argue that's a, that's a, you know, like I said, the disc injury in there. And then we finally, it hit a nerve. You, until the disc until the disc hits a the nerve, there isn't any awareness that there was even any disc injury. It's like a cavity in the tooth. Until the cavity hits the nerve root, people have cavities and are unaware of them until they are aware of them and <laughs> it's there's no warning. All this right up here mm -hmm. is supposed to be working before your lower back and I gotta you know, this is way up here, way too stiff. You know, right there. Mm -hmm. Way too tight. It's okay, well I'm gonna show you some things in a minute how you can lay on your back and put pressure on this and you know, try to try to comb this yourself a little bit. If it was, yeah, it was real bad, Ed, and then it got better in two months, okay, it was an attachment that it got injured. But the fact that it's persisting for four years, the only thing that persists for four years is nerve pressure. <laughs> that doesn't self-resolve. It's not a, um, you know, you have to have somebody like me pour something into your spine or get the arch back to your spine or relieve that pressure on the nerve it doesn't just auto resolve. Disc is is non regenerable. It it is rehydratable. It is kind of repositionable, but but any injuries to it don't you know, don't resolve. It's like a piece of bacon. Once you cook it, there's no uncooking it. There's no like making it back to soft and flexible. This is why I adjust children. People, are, why are you teaching kids stuff? Well, because we're trying to not let them go down that path. And, I keep going back to it, but yeah, there's an injury right here. This is not as bad, and then right there. You ever notice this thing right here before? You ever seen oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've named him. <laughs> Where the marks come out shows also what's internally been trapped, right? So an area that um, has been tight or in a guarded state for a long period of time or posturally tight loses a lot of the normal circulation, which helps to wash out lactic acid or what we call cellular exhaust. So that acidity gets trapped in the tissue and then causes pain and dysfunction. It needs oxygen, you have to you need oxygen to contract the muscle, you also need oxygen to relax the muscle. So part of this treatment is to drive blood into here, to bind to the lactic acid, convert it to carbon dioxide and water and get it out of the body. But the acidity in here causes pain. But yeah, there's a pretty, you see the car, right? Pretty marked difference here. Not much, there's not much of a mark on the left here, a little bit, but.
So the nerves that go down here come through here. So the health of this tissue is connected with the health of the nerves. And so the acidity in here irritates the nerves that compromises the health of the tissue and the glute makes it weaker. Then you, think, then you can pull an attachment or damage something, but it all begins as a nerve. Nothing like minimal on my mm -hmm. left side. It's a little sore now that you're digging, mm -hmm. but oh, now you're getting in there. <laughs> this is the same pressure. This is the same pressure. It actually feels really equal now mm -hmm. that you're that deep. Yeah, I don't. I, I this is. I'm not. There's definitely some inflammation in this joint. I mean, I, if you've had two children and you hadn't had somebody go in here and clean these joints, um, but this is nerve pressure. This is this is this nerve. It's the beginning of sciatica. So what will happen is if we don't, if we ignore this, it'll start radiating down your leg. You'll start having it as thigh tightness or, you know, knee pain. It'll progress down the leg, but it's, it's stage one of neuritis. It, it starts in the, you know, in the glutes and then goes down the leg. You know, but, you know, the, the, giving birth naturally two times puts a lot of stress on this tissue. So I'm not surprised that the glute tissue is, is sore. <laughs> you know, if it, nobody went, they don't really schedule you. They should, after you give birth, to go to somebody and have them clean the glute out. <laughs> you know, go in here and repair all this. You know, the, the SI joint goes through a quite a massive level of stress to get the baby through the pelvic inlet and gets torn up and injured. And, no, nah, just walk it off. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no. Don't do anything for six weeks. You'll yeah, there's, die. there's, there's zero. There's zero education or rehabilitation of, of the injury that you just had twice. Here we go. Here we go. Ooh, I didn't think I was gonna get that, did you? I know. <laughs> I'll get you later for that, Ed. That's. The Epsom salt bath would be wonderful if you have the ability to soak. 15, 20 minutes, just a couple cups of salt. Soak in a tub, or if not, you gotta kinda like make an Epsom salt paste and kinda put it on your back. Do you have a tub? Yes. Okay, just, yeah, be easy just to soak in a tub. And, Same or right one's more sore. More sore on the right. Yeah. yeah. Same pressure, just. And the left one's a little. A little tender. A little tender, but the right one is more really tender right there. Right there is where I feel it. Ouch. <laughs> so this muscle, like I said, this is the tibialis anterior. It's the mm -hmm. muscle that dorsiflexes or mm -hmm. brings your toes upward. The tendon of this muscle supports the arch. So right. the tighter this muscle gets, the arch drops. It's like a lever. It pulls the arch flat. That creates the plantar fascia. Now, ultimately, this muscle's tight because there's too much weight on your toes. Gotcha. Right? So 80, 70, 80% of your weight should be on your heel when you're standing. When you have back problems, hip problems, neck problems, shoulder problems, your weight goes forward. It'll eventually create bunions. You know, you'll start getting these toes shifting, you know, but it's ultimately because our toes aren't designed to hold weight. They're designed for balance, 
you know, to hold weight, to hold weight temporarily, but they're not designed to hold weight all the time. For more symptomatic relief, you gotta, you know, it needs to be rubbed this direction towards the knee. Okay. And there should not be any tenderness in here. If there's tenderness in here, then the ankle and the foot and the plantar fascia are gonna hurt. You have to resolve. And ultimately, it can only be fixed by some of the back stretching I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> it has to be resolved by getting the lumbar curve restored, getting your posture and your hips aligned. Can't you do some sort of therapy to it? No, it's all, <laughs> anything that won't help for more than a day. Does that make sense? It won't work ultimately if we don't fix the root cause. Right, right in there. All these muscles are controlled by the same nerve in your lower back that's irritated, so you can get tightness here from the nerve pressure, mm -hmm. right? Way before, like I said, 10, 15 years before you have somebody gets labeled with sciatica, they were having tightness in their leg. Gotcha. Right? Way before. But then all of a sudden when somebody starts getting, you know, sciatica and we confirm it with a disc injury on MRI, now all of a sudden everybody agrees with me that it's a disc injury. But no, no, no. It was a disc injury long, long ago. And now it's gotten to a significant level. You're at like pre-sciatica or like you might even have restless leg. You know, restless leg syndrome is pre-sciatica. Gotcha. Right? You're, you're bouncing your leg around as a mechanical response that inhibits pain. So mechanical receptors inhibit nociceptors. So when you, you know, you're moving your leg around, you're bringing the nerve away from the pain threshold. So it's a pre, you know, you're getting close to the cliff edge. Um, you know, our world doesn't label that properly. Like, well, you have less restless leg syndrome. It's like, no, yeah, you're getting close to the cliff edge. And now you have sciatica. Trans, you know, no cross friction massage. It would just be holding. Okay. So if anybody's doing like, you know, this type of thing on it, I wouldn't do that. Okay. I would, if, if you're if you're having a lot of discomfort here, I would angle this direction towards the calcaneus, find the spot, and then just panini it. Okay. Compress it. There, the tendon, you know, well, the, even the fascia connects to the outside of the bone. And then there's nerve endings where that connection is, and that's what you're feeling is the you know, that connection there. And so you want to approximate it, compress it down. But any trans friction has the ability to kind of rip it up at the same time you're pushing it down. <laughs> Does that make sense? You're, you're yeah. kind of you're kind of it's like having a cut on your skin. You should just close the wound, but you shouldn't massage it. <laughs> you know, you got to look at it as an internal cut in here, and you just hold go that direction and then just hold pressure on it. But again, this is all just silly if we don't get the, <laughs> if we don't fix the arch and, the, and that tightness in the shin. Go ahead and tilt your head to the right a little bit for me. There we go. Tilt your head to the right. Okay, go ahead. I have two kids, yeah, you can't hurt me anymore. <laughs> tilt to the left. There we go. Go and tilt to the left. Show you lay back for me. I got you. One second, lay back for me. I got you. Mm -hmm. Come on. There we go. Keep the knees bent. Mm -hmm. Arms side. There we go. Let's go to gently bring your knees left. So slowly rotate, stretch. Okay. Mm -hmm. And bring your knees back up. About five, ten seconds. Knees right. Exhale. Mm -hmm. Is this too easy? Or Mm -hmm. okay. Not no, hard, no, it's but super. it's. I want to push you. My, okay. my goal is to push you without overwhelming. Lay back. No, 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 no. I'm going to take out the block. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to. We have to figure out what we can handle. Mm -hmm. And today's, today's exam and treatment. Same time, I'm figuring out where, where, what we can handle. And I want to push you without overwhelming you, right? So if it's too much, I'll back off. But we do want to push it. We, this is the. You really should be on a bigger guy. So I showed you the smaller guy. <laughs> I didn't put you on the big guy because I didn't want to get hit. 
my point is that this is where our, our end game is actually this size. You're, this is the level of arch that should be in your lumbar. The mode of injury, Ed, I was sitting on a couch, reclined, feet up, and then all of a sudden I felt it. It wasn't like you were going up for a spike, mm -hmm. you know, and then you twisted and does that make sense? That's when it popped. I felt, I felt a pop, mm -hmm. right? That would be a different thing. Maybe you pulled a tendon off. This is, I'm just sitting and all of a sudden I'm pregnant, my ligaments are all loose and then it's lower back injury. And so, am I overwhelming it here too much? Is you okay? I'm, I'm driving. I'm just like, I'm stuck here. <laughs> it's under pressure. It's under when, pressure. When you bring your arms up, the first ribs rise up. So we call this thoracic outlet syndrome, is the medical diagnosis. There's a channel where all the nerves that leave your lower neck go through this funnel. Mm -hmm. When you lift your arms up into this position, you're raising the lower wall, which if you're low on tread, if there's tethering going on, mm -hmm. you understand, it doesn't take much to compress, compress them. Which nerve. equals tingling. Correct. And then you move your arms back down. It, it, you're, the, there's not much buffer. It's like moving a three foot wide dresser down a three foot, three inch wide hallway, <laughs> right? Where there's not much buffer on each side before you hit a wall. I wanna widen the hallway <laughs> so that you can just kind of do whatever you want in your life and you're not even close to the, like game, that game operation. You know, it's way too tiny of a, yeah. You're too close to the, you're trying to thread a needle to get your middle back supple. Yeah, mine, mine doesn't like <laughs> <laughs> I'm a character, but, but that's, that's what we've lost. You've lost your suppleness in here. Mm -hmm. and, and then your body's become, this has become home for you. And we belong here, yeah. you understand? And so we have to take you. <laughs> Is that your back? That was my stroke. Yeah, we gotta take you back, you understand, to make you want to be in the middle. Yeah. Okay. How are you feeling? You okay? Yeah. All right, beautiful. Thank you so much for letting me. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.